My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, everybody. I am from Rockville, Maryland, which is outside of the DMV. And I am a performance and health coach. So I help business women um, optimize and maximize who they are and grow their business. Awesome. So let's talk about uh, personal routine. Sure. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, they think they have a routine because their routine is their business and their work. Mm -hmm. How is that? Give us some tips on what we're supposed to be doing with that because everybody's got their own uh, trick, style, and yeah. I mean, what are, what, are the, what are the systematically what high performance people do? High performers, they, they, okay, so there are a couple habits they have. And I would say that some, uh, most of us, if not all of us, have some sort of morning routine or some sort of evening or morning routine where it's just for them to center with their emotions, with checking with where they are before they even conduct business, before they even go about their day. They, uh, and they also, they read, they make time to read every day. They're not, their heads are not in TV or watching, you know, the news all day. And so they make time to invest in themselves. They network with people that uh, force themselves to grow. So I am part of uh, a network of more experienced entrepreneurs and, and business people. And as uncomfortable as it is, I, I know that just by being around them, I'm forced to raise my standards. So if you want to raise your mindset and your skill set and your tool set and you want to level up, you do want to surround yourself with people that will force you to grow out of your comfort zone, that force you and challenge you because a good coach, a great coach is going to challenge you to do that. And also you want to be able to share what you're sharing with your peers and help the people who are also along the way. So we're all in this together to succeed. None of us can be successful by ourselves. And so I see that, you know, collaborating and sharing, this is a group thing. This is the, this is the way we succeed and collaborate, right? Yeah. So here's my question. Sure. So when I get up in the morning, if mm -hmm. I go straight to my email, text messages, responding to... Knowledge, the ones that need some time to investigate and where I can think before I put together a response. So... Uh, if, if some people are struggling with a routine or say struggle with time management and productivity, having a morning routine or evening routine where you've taken, taken an assessment of what's most important, how should you plan your day is highly recommended. So Got if, if you're so highly if it works for you, yes. continue doing it. But my question was kind of like, how do I know it's working? And how do you know that you need to update it? It oh, might be working. It may not be working. Yes. So that was kind of a little bit of a question. Yes. I know I get a lot of stuff done in the morning. Within the first hour or two, like, I'm on it. I'm just like, all the stuff that we need to do because I work with people from different time zones, different mm -hmm. countries, different mm -hmm. states. So if it's like 7 o'clock in the morning, someone in New York is like, they're 10 o'clock in the morning. Yes. You know? or So it's a little bit different. So sometimes that that is what, what ends up happening. So... Be open to suggestions to upgrade your morning routine. Absolutely. Or, or evening routine. If you're an evening person and you feel that you, you would need more sleep, for example, or, uh, and, so, and I help my clients create an evening routine where it's consistent, where they try to go to bed at the same time. They have certain things that help them wind down, not amp them up. And also, if it's something like if you're eating too late at night, some people really have a hard time going to sleep. So when I'm Listen, coaching... If you can't sleep at night, very yeah. fast within like one minute or two yeah your your butt didn't work hard that day like that's that's <laughs> that's my routine like if you don't knock out yeah or pass out yeah. within one or two minutes yeah. like you didn't work hard that day am i wrong to think like that, that you're, you're not wrong i i do sleep really really well i would say that some of some of uh in my in, in my previous experience people who've had struggled with sleeping in the past they had a lot of things on their mind that they couldn't let go. They, they'd have the busiest day and they would say, I'm stressed, I'm anxious, I got all these concerns, they're all piling up, but it keeps them up at night actually because they're not able to manage, they're not managing their, um, some of them it's, it's they're, they're anxious over things they can't control. Some of it is they, they feel, and a lot of it is, has to do with control your perception with what's reality and what you really feel. And so when those are out of alignment, you're going to have some internal tension and struggle. 
And what I would say is, if you had somebody who was wondering, am I being productive? Let's, let's find out, uh, you know, think uh, a series of questions of what are things that you've had accomplished today and did you get them done? And how did you get them done? Were, were they done in, in the fashion where you were like, oh my gosh, I got to stress and get this done because this is a deadline. Or were you like, I've planned this in my day, it's in my schedule. So when the time happens, for example, this was going to happen, right? So I knew that no matter how busy my weeks came to having this up until this appointment, this was going to be where I had to block off because I had another conflict. At, um, at this time, but this is what this is what I committed to first. So that's okay. That's just I just work with that. And when I for me, when I'm very, very overwhelmed, with a lot of things, I do sleep on it. I just I will not let myself get very stressed out about it. Because I, it, I found that what I learned from health coaching was when you're stressed, and when you're very anxious, it suppresses your immune system. And I was so concerned about it's very important. My mindset is I mastered my emotions. I mastered how I want to think and feel. So important because if you let your day control how you think and feel, do you really have control over yourself and what's going on? I agree with that. I mean, yeah. there are, there are uh, professions and there are businesses that you might be able to do that. But I know, there, I know some business owners, mm -hmm. myself in LA, that it's very difficult to block out times to do things mm -hmm. because other things do come up that yeah. they need your attention. So everything does get delayed because of the circumstances and you don't like it because it's out of your calendar or schedule, but you have to still address them. Absolutely. And then when you address them, now you took away from that email sending or that meeting that you have all of these different things. So the days get a little bit longer or, and then I know that that causes challenge, but then again, you know, so some industries, if you're a personal coach, you can block those things out. You don't mm -hmm. have employees coming at you mm -hmm. saying this truck broke down, this so-and-so mm -hmm. didn't deliver, or all of these different things that could go possibly wrong in the processes that you have for your business. So it doesn't apply to all businesses, but I know I myself like to block things out and try to do, but I also know that, you know, that's, I, I I work towards that, but I don't get frustrated when things don't go according to the plan because I know that it's just part of the game. So I think yep. that's getting that conscious that, hey, you know what? It happens. Let's move on. I mean, I, I tell you this story. Last night, I'm sitting talking to one of my buddies, and we're doing this programming, all of these different things. Yeah. We're using all third-party softwares. Yeah. He's, you know, we're doing Zoom, TeamViewer, all these different softwares that has to do with internet, right? Yeah. So we're doing that. All of a sudden, everything just goes blank. All of our internets in the entire, like, half of California was out. Oh, my goodness. Because California was out. So we're in the middle of this whole process, and we needed to get it done last night because we didn't want to deal with it in the morning. We wanted to do it at nighttime. So now I'm on the phone. We're like, what happened? He's like, well, what happened to you? I mean, I don't see this. Good. So you can't, I mean, there was not, I went to sleep, not getting the job done because there wasn't anything I could do. Internet was out. It was just like completely gone. All Wi-Fi is everything shut down. So sometimes in life, we have to be okay with things going wrong. Oh yeah. Then, and also t developing that mindset and attitude that's a really good way to run a business. And, and not to say you're not planning. You're always planning. You're always preparing. But if, you, if you've planned for, there's going to be unexpected things that really, like, make it um, not convenient and make it uncomfortable. And you're willing to accept that risk. An entrepreneur, they're risk takers. This is what they live for. So if, it, if, it, if you can channel it where it's like, you know, some people say, I don't like the word sales. Well, you're always selling something. It's either you're going to influence ideas to your family, to your friends. I mean, and you you can you can share about something you love and you're passionate about. You are you are selling. You just don't like that you have to use that term. But someone who is like crushing it with sales, they're going to be like, "Yeah, I'm a rock star salesperson. I love this." Right? So it just, it's just I sold myself to my wife. <laughs> Whoever says selling, I sold my myself to my wife. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. I was like a hardcore sell right there. How'd you do I told myself, like, there, I was like, I am the best thing that will ever happen to you. Let me tell you why. Yeah. All of these different things. And I was very upfront. You know, if you want a normal lifestyle, 
mm-hmm. easy, all of that, you got the wrong guy. Yeah. But if you're on a roller coaster and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, I'm your guy. I'm 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 the guy who you're supposed to marry. So all of the guys, boring, this, this, this. And, you know, if you're looking for money or if you're looking for that, like, I definitely don't got it. So you got to go over there. But, <laughs> if, you know, I got a lot of potentials. I got a lot of potentials. So what do you want? You know, gar- you know, a guarantee loss where you already know how much they got. It's not going to go higher. Or potential of a lot of gains in the future. So you get to – it's selling. Whoever says they're not selling their life. Or yes. The same thing. You, I've talked to people confused. who say, I don't like to sell. And I'm like, oh, okay. You don't like to sell. That's okay. <laughs> but we're all some, – some of us are just really, really good at connecting with everyone. And some of us, if say you're – you you may find it hard to build rapport. You may find that okay, the idea of sales is uncomfortable. They may not like it because a they they don't think they're good at it, and they don't think that you know, and they don't like to have to put themselves out there. And if you know anything about me, I am the most excitable, enthusiastic introvert ever. And creating a morning routine, creating space, holding space for myself where I can say, Ivy, this is time you need to recharge, and I just need to be away from everyone. I can do that so well for myself because that is how I can be able to recharge and come out here and say, Hey, I'm, I'm excited to work with everybody. Let's go. So, and, and and here's another thing. When people say, I don't like sell, you know what I also feel? I feel like mm. they don't know who they are because mm. internally, if you know who you are and if you know your services are good and your products is good, or what yeah. you do is really helping the community. It's helping two people. Absolutely, that doesn't have yeah. to be a thousand people. Like you really need to check yourself. In it's not an outside job. It's an inside job. So to me, it's like why not? If I don't sell this educational program mm-hmm. to this community, they're mm-hmm. never going to learn, and their mm-hmm. future may not be as bright. So for me, like not to to have an issue with selling, like that's. That doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. you definitely need to go find out what you... Now, there's different ways of selling. Yes. You could sell ethically and unethically. Yes. You could sell from education standpoint where you're, you're, you're finding out what they need. Mm-hmm. You see if the solution is good. You educate them on that solution. They mm-hmm. understand it and then they purchase it. Like, you know, my hairstylist is selling me shampoos, conditioners, all of this stuff. He doesn't feel like he's selling. I don't feel like he's selling. You know, mm-hmm. when I go to auto repair shop, they're telling me what I need to do to get done on my car for the next service. That's not selling. They're educating me on what I need. And if mm-hmm. it makes sense for me, I'll purchase it and I get the services. But if it doesn't make sense, then I'm not doing it. So to me, it's like you really need to get clear on who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Once you get clear on that, I think you're unstoppable because that's it. And if anybody doesn't agree with what you do, well, then that's their opinion. Why should you care about their opinion? Because they don't like, I mean, you know, not everybody's going to drive a Toyota. Not no. everybody's going to buy a Honda. You know, no. as, as good as Lamborghini and Ferraris are, like my wife, if you give her a free one, you just listen, we're about to give you a brand new Lamborghini. She'd be like, eh, I don't like it. I like, that's not what, I don't need that. I'm like, it's free. It's $500,000. Go ahead and take, no, I don't. So a lot of people, they can decide for themselves. And, why would you need to sell if you can educate people on your services? So, Absolutely. You hit it right on. And it's so great. And it's refreshing to hear that perspective because I have a spectrum of like clients and friends. And it's interesting when they say, oh, well, I don't do that. And I was like, okay, but I got a friend who's in insurance, life insurance, and he goes and says he doesn't like to sell. But he's in this business. It's a, it just cracks me up. And he's so good at sharing. And he's so good at educating. And I just think to myself, I know what you're doing, but it's really funny. You like to say you don't like to sell, which is great, but you get a lot of business, so you're doing something right, and just keep doing it, you know? Again, it's more like educational services. Like if somebody doesn't know what type of policy they got, what kind Mm -hmm. of uh, services they need, and you help them get Mm -hmm. educated Mm -hmm. on it, to me it's like that is the definition of selling. But you're selling it based on the client's need. That's completely different then you go into a dealership and they want to sell your car because they just want to sell it to you and you don't need it. That's a different sell. And I think times have changed. I think the, the perception of what individuals thought about salespeople in the past, I think is completely changing. 
It is changing now. And it has been changing since the past because we're looking at, okay, one of the biggest factors is someone who's, you have a lot of people selling the same kind of products, for example, right? Major products in health industry, uh, beauty, skincare, whatever, food, grocery stores. But you're going to buy from um, a brand or somebody that you trust and you like. So if two or three people are with the same product and you could choose, I've heard people say, I went with this person because I had a connection with them. She heard my needs. She understood and cared about me, right? So someone who's going to buy your products and services, because we do have the best products and services. And if they don't buy it, it's their loss. It's okay to walk away. And not everyone's meant for us and that we're not meant for everyone. But the people that we're meant to serve, we absolutely need to be out there to serve them because they, their lives will be impacted. And they don't know how many lives they're going to be touching down, the, you know, down, further down. So and it's just really interesting to see that. Also, to understand uh, the, the, the relationships is the currency in, in these times. And so people now who are, who've had to be, most of us, and you included, you're, you're out of LA, right? right? I don't know what they're doing out there. <laughs> We're, you know, DC's kind of, yeah, not exactly <laughs> like totally free, but it's uh, you, the ones who could learn how to pivot and shift and, and get focused on what can I do to optimize right now? Where can I grow to make the most, add the most value and serve? It's going to be virtual businesses. It's going to be helping people with the tools to generate leads, close a deal, right? Let's, let's get you even better at it. Let's get you equipped with those kind of skills. If you don't know how to do that, hire somebody or work with somebody or grow it, whatever you have to do. And, and you don't have to feel like you're competing with the big ponds, right? Tony Robbins, he has a big pond. And I don't need to go comp compete there. I can learn how to do it in my own pond, my own network. Let's grow it organically. And so I encourage a lot of entrepreneurs, grow it organically because what you would be doing today if things were all open, we'd be having meetings face-to-face, -face, grabbing coffee, having quick appointments, but where we're doing it this way is because you and I are across the country. We, we do it over live Instagram, right? It's Definitely. great. Yeah. No, technology so that, is going to change. Whoever is resisting it is going to be obsolete. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Whoever mm -hmm. resists these times is going to be obsolete. That's how it is. Th things are changing. They have been changing. And a lot of people have been sleeping. This was just a big wake up call for everybody to just, you know, get them going. But listen, Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully, yeah. we'll get to do a lot more. I'm looking at yes. your page. How, how could people find you? Let them know where you're at. Sure. I am on Facebook, and you can find me on Facebook by my first and last name, Ivy Huang. And I am also on Instagram. My handler is at the Ivy Plant. And one thing, I, I did have something to ask you uh, before we end our session. You, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it, hopefully I'll remember it later because um, it had to do with what you what you mentioned lastly about how we have to shift to these to to yeah if, if, if you don't get online and you don't take your business to the online platforms I mean Zoom went from like thirty million subscribers to two hundred million yeah like the, the schools are using Zoom I know my wife who's an attorney is doing a, a lot of uh, you know. Her, communication her client calls, yeah, that's client yeah. calls oh, all here. these different things so it's it's changing oh yeah this is what i was going to mention there are people who and you and i don't have time for this is it's people who are who are still stuck in the mindset that they can't accept that they can't find work that's not true there's opportunity everywhere so they don't want to hear it if you and if they came to us for advice about what should i do what should i do and we tell them, what opportunity, do you want to you know, grow? Do you want to grow new skill sets? What do you, you want to do? What, you know, what are your passions? But then all they want is this quick fix. Like, I want money now. And I'm like, okay, well, you have to it's be not gonna able happen. to put in the work. Exactly. It's not going to happen. You so can't plant a seed and expect a tree the next day or the next week. That's right. it. I'm sorry. If you did not plan it and you were just stuck at your job for the past five, ten years, you weren't learning a new skill. You weren't getting online. You didn't have an Instagram account. You, did, you weren't on Facebook. You were antisocial. You didn't want to put yourself out there. I'm sorry. You might have a little bit of a hard time for the next two, three, six, seven months or a year for you to catch up. Just the name of the game. Yep. You did not do what you need to do. And so many billion-dollar companies are struggling. So for individuals to have that kind of attitude, to me, is like, have you the come problem is that? not the marketplace. The problem is not work. The problem is that the problem is the mindset and your attitude. 
Absolutely. If that cannot be upgraded, we're gonna you're obsolete already. You have not read any books. You haven't watched any YouTube channels. You don't have any mentors that silently you're watching. You're not mm -hmm. innovating. You're watching TV, playing around on the couch. I'm sorry. You deserve to be broke. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And they, they, don't, they don't even want to accept you that. Don't want to innovate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, this is not the country that's going to take care of you if your ass is lazy. Nope. Simple. This is it. Welcome yep. to the marketplace. You know? Oh, it's so refreshing to hear you say that because... I have had to talk to people and I mean, people furlough, people who are not getting their unemployment checks. You know what? They piss and moan about it every day. And it's like, there's so much jobs out there. The opportunity is out there. If you really open your eyes, instead of just trying to get your way about something because this isn't going for you. And if you're not able to shift and pivot, like you said, they're going to be obsolete. So I just want to end it on that. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a name of the game. It's, I, it doesn't make me feel good telling people that. But would you rather have me lie and make you mm -hmm. feel good or tell mm -hmm. you the way it is so you at least know now so you can go and start working on the changes that you need to do? And if you're scared of a change, I mean, just look around. Change is the only constant we have on this planet. Yeah. Simple as that. Change yeah. is the only constant. If you're not going to be able to... Now, I'm not saying change from black to white overnight. I'm not saying go from... Uh, a, a regular employee to a seven-figure, you know, entrepreneur the next day. No, I'm just saying it start getting, you know. The gradual the, the, transition, yeah. That's it. Start working towards that because it's about to happen. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. Hopefully, we can do more sessions with you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And I want to just say thank you. I love your energy. And have a great one. Awesome. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.